Oh my goodness, I am so glad I finally get to film this video and stop the testing of these mice. Today we're going to be talking about the best mice for New World or the best mice for an MMO. And I'm going to give away my number one pick as well. And talking about giveaways, our sponsor of today's video, right? You guys are like, dude, come on, not another sponsor plug in a YouTube video. But no, this sponsor is going to benefit you as well. The Eska E910 wireless gaming headset. We're also going to give two of those away. The Eska E910 wireless gaming headset is packing a very solid build here. As you can see, metal forks, metal grates around the ear cups. Talking about the ear cups, these pads are super plush, as you can see right there. Lock in the sound, retractable microphone, USB C charging, power button right down here with your controls right in line, and then some nice. RGB hidden down there as well. Make sure to check out the Eska E910 wireless gaming headset in the description down below. And also check out the rules on how to enter the giveaway on how to win yourself a pair. All right, so on to these mice. And I'm gonna pull out a chair for this one, guys, because I'm not kidding, guys. I was stinking exhausted just testing these going into it. And you guys are gonna see exactly what I'm talking about here. So I'm not gonna do any of these in any order, right? Because these mice are so much personal preference. I'm gonna break them down. I've tested them, I grinded with them, adjusting settings. I want you to pick out which one's your favorite. Again, I'm gonna let you know my favorite, my pros and cons of all of them, but break this down to what's gonna suit you, right? So let's go on and start number one over here with one a lot of you are gonna probably know about, the Razer Naga. We have the X and then we have the, what is it, the Pro, the wireless version. So as you can see on the Pro over here, I have it swapped out to the side with the six. Of course, the Pro, you can swap out to whatever side, basic two, your dongle stores in there. But I dabble with the six here just to get a little different vibe. On the Naga X, as you can see, you have the 12 buttons there, which is how you can also set the Pro. Now straight out the gate there, let me, let me talk. So the price, Obviously the Pro is gonna cost a little more. You got those different customization function, and everything, right? The shape is the exact same. The weight, let me get my scale. Now the weight is significantly different on both and we'll put the X over here, wire dangling off there. We're getting 83.8 grams right there and it feels very nice in the hand cable. It's decent, it's not great, not bad or anything. Coming over here with the Pro, we're gonna put it down and we are getting 115. The dongle, we left the dongle in there. That's not gonna make a difference. Whatever, take it out and make a little pinch probably. What are we getting? 113.6. You all know I'm not a stickler for weight when it comes to mice, right? I like 70 gram, 80 gram mice. But with the game like New World, when my hand is on that mouse, I'm using it for my buttons and everything. Believe it or not, I started feeling the weight on the Pro. I started feeling it so much because again, I put in an embarrassing amount of time into it that I didn't want to use it, which is why I came over to the X. And using the X like that, it's night and day. It is seriously night and day with this mouse that's full of your hand, you're playing for hours and hours, using all those buttons, moving your hand around, the X felt much better. On the Pro, we have the six button set up there, and then you got your buttons up top, which you can program. You also program these to what you want. Over here on the X, we got the 12 button set up, and then of course you got all your other buttons right there as well. And like I stated, you can change the pro around. So with me mapping the buttons for New World onto the Naga X or the Pro, both the exact same right here, right? It was pretty good. It really was. The one thing I didn't like about the Pro or the X is the side buttons, they're just hard to differentiate, right? Because they're all smooth. You got some angles going right there, but it's not enough to really decipher one from the other. Hence the reason why I went to the six button layout on the Naga Pro over here. It was just a lot easier. I can rest my finger, my thumb on it, press right there and still access the other buttons. Now, of course, I'm limited six buttons, but it still worked out. I put my primary there. One thing I really wanna point out, as I just said right there, is gripping the mouse, right? I got the little grip, bam, my buttons. So you're still gripping your mouse when you're moving around, even in a game like New World, so you grip right there. Think about doing that over here on the X. You almost have to like rest your fingers right there. You can't necessarily press in or you're gonna press the buttons. That's also another thing what came into play with the Pro. Whenever I had the 12 buttons there with it being so heavy, with you just having to rest your fingers over there if you had the 12 buttons, 
again, guys, it, it was just a bad combo for me, at least. I sound like I'm complaining, but it, again, it was a bit of a stinker. Now, as far as the button press on both of them, they're very crispy and right to the point. So one last thing I want to point out on the Naga Pro, more importantly here, as we just did that button press, right? A weird thing here, faulty on my copy, not too sure, right? I haven't used this mouse much before this right here, basic testing, but now I was grinding with it, right? With the interchangeable sides right there, I had some issue with some buttons not registering occasionally. Now, I was flopping my sides back and forth, you know, constantly here and there, which is the point of the mouse. But anyways, sometimes I'd have a button that wouldn't register with the 12 button slot right there, right? So I'd press one and it just wouldn't work. I'm like smashing, like what's going on, right? So I reset my computer, yada, yada. And I'm like, wait a second, hold on. So I take it and I clean off the contacts on here and then in here, put it back, bam, we're back in business. And it happened multiple times as I was swapping them out. I don't know, is dust getting in there or something? I don't know, I'm not really manhandling, I'm just swapping them out, you know what I mean? So that was a bit of a stinker. Hopefully that's not an issue that happens further on down the road. So wrapping up the Razer Naga here. As far as price, the Naga Pro comes in around 150 and then the Naga X comes right around 80 bucks. You can find them both on sale quite often these days. Which one would I recommend? I love wireless, guys, you all know I'll sacrifice weight for wireless. I, I just love wireless, I really do. But for New World, for New World, I would go with the X. I, I just would, I mean, the wire stinks, it does. But just for those long gaming sessions, I, I just think you're gonna enjoy your time a lot more with the X. The Pro definitely screams more value to me, being able to swap it out. You got different settings to choose from, different sides. You can put the two button to use it as a regular daily mice. Uh, mouse, you know what I mean? The Pro definitely screams more value, more versatility, of course, but for New World, I gotta say the X. The next mouse on our list here is a really cool one from Corsair, the Corsair Scimitar here, if I'm saying that right. Now, why I pull this one next is, well, take a look at it. It looks just like the Naga right there, right? So it's perfectly flowing right with it. As far as the shape, fairly similar. Your hand sits on it quite the same. You got the little rest right over there, a little thinner on this side, but your hand still rests on it right there. You have your plethora of buttons over here. Now, one thing I wanna show you real quick, take a look at the Corsair buttons, right? You got smooth, textured, smooth, textured. So you can clearly decipher them. You know when you're pressing a smooth button. You know when you're pressing a textured button. I love it. They did this right right here. But the cooler thing, how about this little Allen wrench we have right here, right? Right? So you got that little hole right on the bottom, little Allen wrench hole right here. Take it in, loosen it up. Am I going the right way? Ah, okay, I must have over tightened it before. There we go. So we had our buttons right there, loosened our little hole right there, our little screw. Bam, look at it sliding. That is so cool. Why is that cool you're asking, right? So if your hand's here and you have those longer thumbs, you don't wanna reach back to those back buttons. You have it right there. That plays a big role. You're looking like, who needs that? Trust me, when you start using one, trust me, you're gonna be like, yo, that's stinking awesome, right? Because again, you're gaming, right? Say if it's all the way towards the back here, right? You're playing, you got to pull that thumb back all the way back to here. And when you pull your thumb back, it's not just your thumb, right? So you're gaming down here, you pull it back, your whole hand is adjusting. You almost like crawl across your mouse, just like that right there to get to those back buttons. Yet when you scooch it up, maybe not even all the way to the front, maybe just right in the middle there. I can get the front buttons there. Sure, you still gotta move your thumb, but now you don't have to move your entire hand. Again, you might be looking at that like gimmicky. Believe you me, it is not, and that is incredibly stinking awesome. Now on the course there, it is also a lofty one coming in at 110.04. We got the cable, so that's gonna adjust a little bit right there, 114.02. Again, it's bouncing around because the cable. Now talking about this cable, guys, Whew, it's a stiff one, it really is. It's just that heavy duty Corsair cable you're used to if you used a Corsair mouse before, holds its position, it's a pain. I do not like this cable. As far as the buttons on the Corsair, they're very soft and right to the point, as you can see.
And as far as using the Corsair in-game, I use the exact same settings as we showed in the Naga right there, as far as in-game and in software. And it gamed, like, went going from one to the other of these, it was pretty much just like an easy switch, because again, they're both so stinking similar. And the Corsair is coming in at 80 bucks MSRP right there, and I really like it. The only thing I don't like about the Corsair, the one and only thing, is that cable. Make this in wireless Corsair, and whoo, man, that'll be stinking nice. I think it'll still be heavy, kind of like the Naga Pro, uh, being wireless and whatnot. Maybe just update, the, this cable just stinks, guys. Next up is the Logitech G502. I'm sure a lot of you know about this. We have the light speed one here, because again, I stink and love wireless mice, but if you want to save some money, maybe just test it out, you can also get the wired version. But the G502, as you look at right here, we don't have as much going on like we do with the other couple mice we just looked at. We got a couple buttons up here, right on the side. You got your one and two, your scroll wheel, of course, and then three buttons on the side right there. So a lot easier to use, a lot easier to get used to. Maybe set your uh, weapon, your special moves, right onto the three over there, which is what I dabbled with. And then I used my weapon swap up here. And then I binded my uh, consumables to one, two, three, four, and then tweaked out there, right? And it worked out great. It was an easy transition going from a basic two button, two side button mouse to this one. Cause again, the buttons are right there, right? Bam, right on the side here and right there. Very crispy, by the way. Now the weight on the 502 is a lofty one. It really is 114.5 with the dongle out. Holy smokes, this thing is lofty for the size that it is. And speaking of the size that it is, right? It's smaller than the other ones we just looked at. You don't have those rests on the side or anything, right? When you just straight up look at it here, you kind of have that traditional mouse shape minus the thumb rest over here, right? So you're gaming, you put your hand down on this, right? So think about it like this, I wanna show you. We're sitting on our Corsair like this. We're sitting on our Naga like this. Now we're sitting on the Logitech and it's coming in down here. Again, kind of like how you're holding a traditional mouse. Just like that, you kind of come up into that claw if you need to. You can rest it down. It sits into the back of your palm, kind of right down in the middle, but not all the way to the far back. So when you look at it like that, talking about a regular style gaming mouse compared to those big old chunkers over there, right? Your hand, starts to feel that fatigue in game. You really do, because you're coming around, your side buttons are right there, so you're not really moving your hand, everything's right there. But as far as this side of your hand, because you're walking around a lot, you're going to missions, and you're just holding it like this. For me, I just started feeling it over there again, playing a ridiculous amount of New World, more than I should be, I would start feeling it in my hand right there and it became quite annoying. So, so it has so much going for it, right? Talking about it being the easiest to transition to. Awesome build, versatile, because it's not just gonna be an MMO mouse. You can use it for first person, for work, for multiple styles of game. This mouse is gonna get you done, right? At the MSRP of 150, that's where it really justifies it for me. Again, kind of like the Naga Pro, like I talked about, you use it in multiple situations. It's not just an MMO mouse, but you're also limited within your MMO for like New World or whatnot, right? You don't have as many buttons here, but I think you have enough. You're gonna get your primary abilities and what you want set on it, set right there. Say abilities, your map and your journal or whatever it may be, your settings. I think you have enough to get the essentials done here. Nothing crazy, you know what I mean? So I do like it, what it's offering, what it's packing. But for me, I, I would say if you got smaller to medium hands, this would be a nice pick. If you got larger hands like me, I'd probably have to say a pass. Next up, a shocker for sure. Definitely for me, right? The EVGA X15. Some of you are probably like, what? EVGA makes mice? You know what I mean? Uh, I've tested a few of their mice before with uh, not so great results, right? But this one, wow, it blew me away, guys. Take a look at this shape, right? Okay, so you're seeing Corsair, Razor, that type of deal, right? Your side buttons, the grips over here, it is longer. It's definitely longer. Take a look at this in my hand. Coming to the back of my palm, sitting right there. Again, shape is different for everybody, right? But when this sits in the hand, it's a stinking glove. It's not too big, it's not too wide, it's perfect length. 
your hand sits on it. It really does. Now I want to show you another thing that's really cool about this, right? Button one and two. The rest over here is actually another button. Wow, that's stinking awesome. Button right here, those two, and then these buttons on the side right there. The surface of this mouse is all being utilized, right? Where your hand sits right there, you got those three buttons. That's stinking awesome. All of those other mice with that finger rest over there should have this. Why waste that space? That is stinking phenomenal right there. I love it. Now, downside, looking at these side buttons over here. Okay, we got an upside and a downside, right? Upside is in the middle. Remember how I told you the knocker, you can't really grip it because the button's in the middle. This you still have a blank spot right in the middle right there, which you can still kind of rest your finger on without activating buttons. Downside is the other two buttons up towards the front here are really far. So the mouse is sitting in your hand. You're pretty much just like this, right? I mean, just take a look. If I want to get to those front buttons, I mean, I gotta like, I almost can't even, like if I reach and just press here, I'm gonna activate five down here as well. Like just pressing, I'm activating five. So I gotta lift my hand up and get up here and try to get to those two buttons up there. And that was the biggest downside of this mouse right here is those two front buttons, I would almost even say unusable. Cause again, they're just a pain. Like to use them, I was like, do I gotta reach for those again? You know what I mean? So I started mapping uh, to use without them, right? But everything else, the three buttons on the front, the two up top here, they all sound great. Now talking about the weight on the X15 right here, we're gonna see it come in pretty lofty, right? 117 with the cable, which Again, the, the cable's not great. It's kind of Corsair-ish, maybe a little bit lighter than the Corsair, but still a stinker of a cable, not great by any means. But where I want to catch you is where we're looking at that weight, talking it being 117. It's lofty, just like the other ones we've been looking at, right? But like I state in all of my other mice reviews, first person shooter or anything like that, it's about that shape, not so much that weight. Is that mouse in your fingertips or is that mouse in your hand? The X15 is in your hand. So with it being 117, whatever we just looked at right there, you're not just moving it up in your fingertips or right back here, whatever. It's your entire hand. It's like you're moving your hand. So you don't notice that weight right there. It honestly feels lighter than even the Naga X, as crazy as it sounds. Now, of course, that's going to depend on person to person with their hand size right there, right? But the weight of this guy, it was just balanced. I can't say it enough, guys. Ergonomics are perfect on this. Now closing the X15 out on price, MSRP is 80 bucks, but again, just like every single mouse we're gonna talk about here, guys, it's like MMOs just aren't popular, right? They're all stinking on sale. So again, check out all the links down in the description and they're all gonna be much lower than the MSRPs I'm talking about here, right? And I really like this mouse. This mouse almost took the number one spot. It almost did. So you're probably asking, yo man, that mouse sounded perfect. Why didn't it take the number one spot, right? Well, the next mouse we're gonna talk about, which is, by the way, the mouse I'm gonna give away, it was just perfect. It worked out great. It felt great. Nothing was overdone. Everything was in the right spot. It was amazing. The Logitech G604 wireless mouse right here. All right, so let's take a look at the 604. Nice, simple shape, plump, nothing crazy. You don't have to swoop out on the side, right? You do have the thumb rest over here. And when you put your hand on this, this is what I want to show you guys. So your hand's coming down. It's not as small as the 502, okay? So my fingers aren't like coming down here. I'm not getting cramped. I still got that nice rest on the back back here, right? Coming down, my thumb's sitting here, right? We got the six buttons like we saw in the Naga. My thumb's sitting there. Yo, my thumb is right here. It is right there. I just reach up, press the buttons. Now, of course, I got to lift up to get to the top ones. Thumb size, thumb placement will be different for people, but for me, it's right there. Coming up to the top, one and two, and you also have two other buttons on the side. So looking at those buttons right there, it's perfect. Nothing's overdone, nothing's overtaken one another, everything's kind of separate. You got six buttons right there, which are manageable. You don't have 12, like what am I pressing? I don't get fat fingers. Right, you got the two buttons up here that you can cycle me. I do weapon cycle, I believe, and then up to put my weapon away. You got your one and two, and then again, your abilities over here. I got my map, my journal. It just has everything set 
perfect on it. Now talking about weight, this guy is lofty. It is lofty, 128.8, but I go right back to the EVGA. That shape is gonna be key right there. And if you have medium to large hands, this is gonna be perfect. And you're not really gonna notice the weight because again, it's moving with your hand, not just one spot. You're not flicking it and dipping it, kind of like what we saw with the Corsair or the Razor. It just sits up here in the front of your hand. This guy actually comes out and fills out your entire hand and it's just part of it. You're not moving your hand to touch the buttons or anything. Now it does use a double A for its battery right there. I have a lithium ion battery in here because well, they're just lighter. They're much lighter than a regular double A. So if you pick this mouse up, I highly recommend you go pick up a pack of these lithium batteries. It just, it makes a world of difference. Again, it just makes it feel more balanced and a lot more lightweight. And that's why the 604 takes the number one spot for me. Is it simple to transition to? It's easy to use, everything's laid out. You don't gotta memorize all sorts of crazy buttons. You have plenty of buttons, but they're all separated from each other somewhat right there. So you know, hey, this does that, and this does that. Now, MSRP on this guy comes in at 100 bucks. You can find it on sale like I was talking about with some of the other ones, but usually not as good of a sale as you can see with the other guys over there, right? I mean, it's not far off of the other ones, and some people will be like, well, this one uses batteries. Well, this one's the heaviest. This one's the oldest, you know? But at the end of the day, if it does the task right, it does the task right. And the 604 closes the door. That just rhymed, and this takes number one. All right, so let me know down in the comments which mouse was your favorite and which one are you using or which one are you gonna go on and pick up? I'm really curious. Again, if you're using something different, let me know as well. I just wanna know because I'm so sucked into this game I love testing these mice. I had an absolute blast, but again, like I stated in the beginning, I am glad I'm done with this video because tweaking all the settings with all these different mice got quite exhausting. But all in all, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this one. I had an absolute blast with it. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope I helped you out. If it did, hit that thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to some future tech videos. Hey, I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye now. So looking at those buttons right there,